Hi, welcome to SpaceCast. It's Apollo Week this week, and SpaceCast is where we talk about satellites and space events and th things generally going on in aerospace and defense. Today we have a few guests. Uh, starting on the far side, we have Bob Hall. He's been here before. Bob is the Director of Operations for the ComSpoc, the Commercial Space Operations Center. Next to him is our Chief Astrodynamicist, Jim Woodburn. Dr. Woodburn, welcome. Thank you. And doc uh, Cody Short, are you a doctor, Cody? Usually. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> Cody heads up our astrogator uh, development, and we, that is the tool that we use to recreate the Apollo simulation. Absent today is Austin Claybrook. Austin is our engineer who painstakingly took the time to go through the troves of data of the history of Apollo 11 and recreate the simulation. He did a webinar on it. He did a training on it uh, that I recommend that you you check out if you want to learn how to do it yourself and get your hands on and do some interactive stuff with the Apollo stuff that we're going to show. But today we're going to go through and play Austin's simulation front to back, and the team here is going to be telling you what you're looking at. So a couple other things to keep your eye out for Apollo things is you go to agi.com slash Apollo, and we're going to have a link to a live stream of the same thing that we are showing down at the National Air and Space Museum um, at the Boeing Milestones of Flight Hall. So that's where Austin is. He's down there setting up for that, for the live event. And uh, we're going to be doing a presentation on Saturday down at the mall. So if you're in the Washington, D.C. area, check it out. Uh, if you're in Denver, it's Apollo Palooza Week at the uh, Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum. And our senior astrodynamicist, Dave Villato, will be there doing some presentations on future and uh, history of lunar missions and things. So that should be pretty cool if you're out there. Um, guys, you got anything else to add? You know what's going on uh, Apollo-wise this week? Worth talking about? Everything. 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 All Apollo, Apollo all the time. All Apollo. I like that Apollo Palooza. We that's a that's a good that's a good term. So what we're gonna do here is people have been asking for these uh, the the clips of Austin's simulation that he spent a lot of time recreating. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna play that. And if you want to use these clips, just email media at agi.com, and they're over in the other playlist called stock footage you can take up check them out individually and we're gonna we're gonna run through it so with without any further ado here is guys we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna play it up on that screen and we're going to uh tell us bob jim cody tell us what we're looking at okay here we go should we get a countdown on the launch bob a drum roll countdown no the countdown's on screen countdown's on screen okay all right here we go so, so one quick question is you know why why did we do this uh, by having an accurate STK scenario allowed you to have a bird's eye view uh, that was not possible with any of the onboard cameras. So you're able to look at the entirety of what went on during the mission from outside any of the spacecraft, and it gives you a, a different perspective. But to do that, STK doesn't let you lie. You have to be absolutely accurate. So that's why Austin had to go build this accurately. Right. And during during this initial uh, launch segment, you know, we see the Saturn V going up, uh, burning a tremendous amount of fuel during this period of time. In the first 150 seconds, we're going through 500,000 gallons of, of fuel. Not exactly compliant with today's fuel economy standards. <laughs> it's not like a regular hybrid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then we just saw that the uh, first stage <coughs> dropped off. Um Moving on now on the second stage. There goes the launch escape tower. So they're fully committed at this point. Can't escape. Can't right. escape. Right. And you can't we, see it because of the plume, but the, there's the five, uh, I believe they're J2 engines on the bottom of the uh, second stage that are firing. I feel like we should add in some uh, rocket noises or something here. Right. Cody, can you... Now, now this is this is yeah. now the third stage. We jumped ahead. This is the translunar injection. So right. they're about four hours into the mission, or sorry, two and a half hours into the mission, and they just burn to leave Earth orbit and head towards the moon or into translunar orbit. Right, and that's a that's a really crucial part because the whole uh, mission to the moon type scenario is a you can think of it as a rendezvous type thing. You have to get to the moon when it's at the place where you're going. So. It's all about timing uh, of your orbit against the, the lunar orbit. And here we're seeing uh, the command service module has separated and is rotating around and is going to come back to the third stage to pull out the uh, lunar module. There are a lot of steps along the way that if you don't hit those steps, like your translunar injection, or if you can't do this docking, like everything's off. So 
Right, like just getting the hard dock on the lamb, all that. And now everything we see on the screen right here is now on its way toward the moon. Uh, right. So, so they, they do this, and now that third stage, which has kind of done its job, is going to fly towards the moon. That's right. And another interesting part about this was that that entire um, maneuver where the service module pulls the lunar module out, that was all done manually by Mike Collins. So now, this, in this particular part, um, you just saw the, uh, the whole configuration spin up. That spin is initiated to uh, control the thermal aspects of the mission. So you don't want one side pointed towards the sun for too long. It'll get too hot. So they roll the spacecraft in order to manage uh, the thermal issues that go along with a mission like this. Affectionately referred to as the barbecue roll. The barbecue roll. Right. And, and it's because the trip to the moon is about three days long. We've jumped ahead very quickly in this video. They sit that way for three days. They couldn't have one side get heated, so they had to do that. Right. Slowly roasting. Like and so now we're, we're going, uh, well, we're arriving at the moon here, and it is now starting the lunar orbit insertion burn. So if, in the absence of this particular maneuver, which you can see was in the opposite direction of the spacecraft motion, um, the entire configuration would have just continued to fly by the moon. So they had to slow down in order to be captured by the, the lunar gravity. You can see how that happens with the other stage of the rocket there. It's kind of just continuing on. Yeah, that's the uh, spent third stage there. Now, now here we are, we're on July 20th here. Um, Armstrong and, and Aldrin are in the limb, the legs are out, they've undocked, uh, and now they're going to head down to the surface. Right, and this, this whole um, sequence of, you know, doing this uh, undocking at the moon, taking the uh, lunar module down to the surface and then bringing it back up to the command uh, module again, that was a, that was a huge design um, decision that had to be made, whether these types of configuration changes would be made in Earth orbit or in lunar orbit or if we would just do a direct ascent and direct return type mission. Um, the, uh, the doing this at the moon allowed us to use a lot less fuel, um, but at the same time, if anything went wrong, there was really no uh, rescue plan for the astronauts. I'm always impressed by how every step along the way is critical. It's just, you have to be able to execute the things that you've planned to do and, and practiced and you know, here, when Armstrong takes over and manually lands the limb, it's, uh, I'm always impressed by these things. Uh, that's why astronauts got paid the big bucks, right? Okay, so now if you pay attention to the altitude in the lower right-hand right corner there, we're getting pretty close. We're about 600 feet above the surface and dropping. And at this point, Armstrong is taking control. Notice now he's hovering. He stated that the automation was about to bring them into a football field-sized crater, so he took over, went past it, and oh, by the way, it was down to about 16 seconds of fuel when he landed. Right. And we've skipped over the actual um, lunar surface portion. So that was the fastest 22 hours you ever experienced. And we're now uh, taking the, um, the astronauts back up to rendezvous with the command module again. Um, one interesting part about when they were on the moon, though, um, while they were on their way, the vehicle was known as the Eagle. But as soon as they landed on the moon, then their call sign switched over to Tranquility Base. Right, and, and when they're docked, uh, they are Apollo 11. It's only when they're undocked that they have their individual names. So, so they've, uh, they've done the burn. They've come up into uh, a partial lunar orbit uh, to the, the altitude of the command module, and then Mike Collins is approaching them as you see they've they've got the proper orientation and he's going to come in and dock with the lem for the second time this mission second time's easier right one would hope but again this is another it's a cool you know, shot. critical part of the mission that if anything went wrong you know the, there would have been no uh, no contingency plan there so, so we, we jumped ahead three days. Now we're at the Earth already. They've, they've come home. They're about to separate the service module. It's done their job. It served them well. You're going to see the latch on the top there open, and the service module gets ejected. 
so that the command module can uh, turn around and go through the fiery re-entry. Right. Notice right. it's nighttime over Australia as they're coming in. And they're coming back right now at about 24,500 miles an hour. So when they uh, hit the atmosphere thing here, things are really going to heat up. And it turns out in the Apollo design, the service module was supposed to be separated and skip off the atmosphere and keep going past the Earth. On the first few Apollo missions, there was a problem, or uh, let's say an unexpected design with the separation that resulted in the service module re-entering alongside the command module. Not necessarily close, but at least uh, in one case, I think Aldrin reported he could see the service module re-entering out his window. Yeah, that would be a little disconcerting. I mean, you can just imagine what's going through the astronauts' minds at this point. You know, they've gone all the way out to the uh, the moon. They've managed to land. They've managed to get off the lunar surface, uh, redock with a command service module, make it all the way back to Earth. And now they're going through this fiery reentry, and that um, you know reentry module is just shaking all over the place, and they're just holding on for dear life, hoping that this stage of the uh, thing ends. And look, it did. So what happens? Well, we don't we don't want to spoil that for everybody. So <laughs> like Bob said earlier, we'll, we'll tell, you, yeah. tell you next season. That's After right. Tune next in season. next time. All right. So our, our heroes survive. That's it for the simulation. If you want to take a look at it and get your hands on it and play around with it, and you know, Bob was saying earlier, there's a lot of uh, new perspectives that people have not seen before. Well, if you if you have it running in SDK, you can make your own perspectives and look at it from an angle that we did not particularly show here because what we're showing is is a video. So if you want to learn how to do that, check out the videos uh, on agi.com slash Apollo where Austin walks through the training of how to build this. And if you want to use any of these clips, just email media at agi.com. You can see the individual clips over at the playlist uh, called Stock Footage. And thanks for watching. You guys got anything else? Happy anniversary, um, Apollo. Yeah, happy anniversary, Apollo. And just uh, kudos to Austin for really putting together a fantastic scenario. All the work that he did to uh, bring this all together and be technically accurate. Uh, it's just uh, just amazing, and uh, he really deserves a lot of credit for that. And so we hope that uh, everybody out there enjoys the fruits of his efforts. So, so just a foot stomp that. What that means is the the time-based history of the position and velocity of these objects, as well as the attitude or the orientation of these objects, is absolutely correct based on all the contemporaneous mission reports that were published. Yep. And we'll be playing that back as a live stream as if it was happening today or as, as if today was 1969 on AGI.com uh, slash Apollo. You'll see the as at unfolding at the same time that it would have 50 years ago. And if you're at... Uh, if you're down in Washington, D.C., head on over to the National Air and Space Museum to see the same thing. And if you're in Denver, check out the uh, Wings of the Rockies Air and Space Museum. Right. And don't forget to wear your um, groovy shirts and bell bottoms. Yes. <laughs> we should have all had, like, big sideburns or something for that. That's, right. that's the right some area. Good lamb, Maybe. Yeah, that's good, about Good right. lamb chops. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Till next time. See you later. <laughs>